electoral process and therefore abled and disabled persons alike. And therefore the Commission has put in a lot of measures to ensure the safety measures of all persons who apply for mm. their names to be put mm. on the on electoral the roll, yeah, as well as ensuring the integrity of the electoral process. Talking about persons with disability, this is not the first time we are having to register persons with disability in the electoral process. And any time the commission does, we have um, sensitization with persons with disability. And plans are underway for the persons with disability to be engaged very soon before the registration process. And before I, I continue, I want to say that the Commission has plans in its voter education to ensure that everything that the persons with disability need to know is put in the public domain. And we have a lot of things we put in place when we so, have so let me cut you. So what you're saying is that the, although their concerns are genuine, the Electoral Commission has had the record of holding uh, compilation uh, registers and whatever conducts work you do, you have provided situations for uh, persons with disability to be able to access exactly. whatever they need. Exactly. And there are, there are lots of information yes. around to help them do yes. that. Yes, mm. exactly. And you even made my work easier for me. They would attest to the fact that before every electoral process, we engage them at the regional levels across the country so that we get concerns from them. And then we also tell them the measures the commission has put in place to ensure their effective particip participation in the electoral process. And as I said earlier, very soon we're going to have um, sensitization workshops for them. And then the commission will tell them exactly what the safety measures they've put in place. We all know that you are supposed to wear your mask is compulsory before you enter the registration center. You, there are hand sanitizers, there are Veronica buckets, soap and water to wash your hands. And then we maintain the social distancing of less, uh, more than a meter at least to ensure that everybody is safe. And then we'll, there will be frequent wiping of surfaces that are used with alcohol-based um, wipes to ensure that we don't have any um, virus around anywhere for any person to contract. Mm, so I want to uh, finally hear from you about assurances. So as they've expressed these concerns, absolutely, they need assurances to be sure that everything will be smooth, as you said. So what assurances or guarantees can you offer to persons with disability as uh, the Electoral Commission considers to start the registration process end of June through to July? The assurance is that, first of all, they are safe to participate in the electoral process because as they approach the registration centers, there will be guidelines that are pasted there for them to see the safety measures the Commission has put in place. Again, there's preferential treatment that we give to persons with disability, not only persons with disability, but all vulnerable people. Like the aged, the, the aged pregnant the sick, women. Exactly. The sick, mm. And therefore, they would be accorded that preference so that they don't join the normal queues, the long queues anyway, so that it, 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 it facilitates their participation in the process. And this is what they've been enjoying over the years. And so going there's to no reason why exactly. there should be any change. Madam, we're grateful so. for your time. Thank you very Thank much. You uh, Madam, uh, it's the in charge of uh, gender at the Electoral Commission. This is still midday live from our studios at Addis Ababa. We'll be right back with the business segment. Good afternoon. It's time to do sports here on Midday Live on TV3. My name is Yao. Of course, we'll have been out to our first story, and Ghanaian football legend Abedi Pele has, in a rare interview, paid homage to some of the people who helped him in his career. He was speaking on the state's broadcaster, GTV Sports Plus. Not one to readily get in front of the camera. The interview was a fitting tribute to a man who defied many odds to attain 
global status. While on the show, Abedi was joined by the man who nurtured him at lower tier side Great Farkos, Herbert Adika, who recounted his time with Abedi in an emotional tribute that got the maestro to shed some tears on live television. I find it very difficult to describe the type of player he was. And he has proved himself so well that at no given time will I say anything I didn't like about him. He was really a good player. He was obedient. The, the, the good accolades I can give him. He was a really a player who obeyed instructions. And that made him what he is today. Short of words. I see him often. He comes to the house. He comes to the training grounds to see me. And I'm always very happy to see him. So. It was a big surprise. Enormous surprise, yeah. Aware of the support he enjoyed, Abedi heaped praises on some of the people who helped him in his career, including his friend and former colleague Abu Imoru, saying their relationship was so special they looked out for each other across many career adventures. There are a lot of people who really made me who I am yeah. but you know it's it was gradual process okay and the there were a lot of them who are not alive today okay and I'm taking this particular day to remember all of them because when most of them pass away I wasn't in the country okay. therefore when I came I went to see the families and you know paid my condolences abedi remains one of ghana's biggest football exports an achievement that has opened many doors for today's shining stars the legacy lives on Also, some local stories and football in Ghana will remain suspended until at least the 31st of July 2020 as government announced further lifting of restrictions and forced to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Non-contact sports such as golf, tennis, athletics, badminton, table tennis, triathlon and cricket uh, can, however, return to being played. Hope that football was due to return at least behind closed doors have now been shut despite rigorous consultations between uh, the Ghana Football Association and Ghana's COVID-19 Tax Force. An eight-year-old uh, historian, Gabriel Apia, popularly known as Nana AK, is a judged winner of Talented Kids Season 11. For Imagine Tops, the amazing poet took home a cash prize of 10,000 CDs and a 15,000 worth educational fund, an educational scholarship, a fully paid trip abroad sponsored by British Columbia College, among others. For the year 2020, yes. the 11th season of Talented Kids. Season 11. Ghana's most talented kid is... Goes to... It goes to... Na Na Na
Congratulations to Nana AK for winning that prestigious uh, prize. I'm Stephen Enti. Thank you very much for staying with us. And that's how we wrap up with Midday Live. Thanks for your time. And we have the crew here. Good afternoon. There is more news at 3news.com.